My name is Roy Caldwood. I'm a retired assistant deputy warden. I started uh, my career in 1955. When I started out in correction, I, I was hoping that I could make a change, I could improve the, the jail system somewhat within my limitations as a correction officer, that I could help people. But how to do it, that was the big problem. I had no concept, no idea, no nothing. You know, you weren't supposed to talk to the inmates except to give orders. To, to talk otherwise, to speak otherwise, they called it fraternizing. And you don't fraternize, you simply give orders. Corrections was really a job for most people. They had not given very much thought to inmates. They were coming to work, feeding the inmates, giving them linen, beating them up if they didn't follow the rules going home. The whole place was a snake pit. It was a horror. There were so many inequities and so many things that were wrong. They were brutalized in every manner, shape, and form. Well, of course, I didn't go along with that. I can't tell you exactly how I met Roy. I knew about him before I met him. He was a little bit of a legend. He was supposed to have stopped a riot, one of the biggest riots that they'd had at the men's house of detention. I'm home, relaxing Sunday morning. The phone rings. <coughs> Deputy Warden. Oh, Roy, uh, we have a little problem. I said, oh, yeah? What's the little problem? He says, uh, we got a notice from downtown that uh, they want Cuba transferred to the tombs. I says, Dip, you don't have a little problem. You got a goddamn big problem. I says, if he refuses to go, they've got 120 guys that's going to stand with him. Well, Roy, would you handle it? I should have said no. I, I went against my gut feelings. I should have said, hell no. But I'm not too bright. My wife will tell you I'm not too bright. I said, all right, I said, I'll go in. And I told him, I said, do you have a big force standing by? Because I knew what we were going to face. Beautiful, bright day. Sun shining. When I stepped out of that sunshine, I felt like I was going into a coffin. First thing, I go to check my response team. Five officers. What the hell am I going to do with five officers? I should have gone home then. The inmate leader I knew very well. This guy's name was Cuba. That was his nickname. I go down to the cell block. I tell the officer, bring Cuba down. This is uh, Cuba. We've gotten a call from downtown. And they said that they want us, us to transfer you to Manhattan House for detention. He hollered, I'm not going. I said, look, you're trying to help your people. You don't want anything to happen to them. I know if you refuse to go, I know there's a whole bunch of guys going to stand with you and there's going to be a big fight, but they're going to get hurt. They're going to lose. So he finally says, okay, Depp, I'll go. So waiting for Cuba to come. Two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes. Well, I said, oh, this is not good. This is definitely not good. They had about maybe seven inmates out. They were the cleaning up crew. Everybody, all the rest of them were locked in their cell. One of them runs over to me. He says, Cuba is not leaving. I said, oh my God. I said, this is it. I'm looking down the muzzle of that goddamn gun. Then I hear, boom! I think my head is off. He missed me. The canister comes in, hits the steel bars, it's going up, smoke all up. Inmates are screaming. I'll never forget what they said. They don't give a damn about you. They don't care if you die. I said, they're going to kill me. They're going to kill me while I'm moving, not while I'm standing here. He had the club down here. He brings the club to the center. In the meantime, these two guys are holding, two officers are holding me. I don't know when the hell they're looking. I don't know where their eyes are. Now this guy takes that club. He's bringing the club up. I said, oh my God. This is no way to die. And he's bringing that bare head. He's got two hands on the club, and he gets the club up to the pinnacle. I said, I'm dead. How many times am I going to say those, say those words, I'm dead? 